there are very few labels in this business that last 25 years, let alone labels doing metal. We just stick to our guns. When metal's not cool, we sign metal. When metal is cool, we still sign metal. We just do our thing. And I think that's why we've survived. We've been persistent in our goal. We've consistently been signing and releasing great metal records since the beginning. Cool, thanks. Is this the latest copy? Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Better be it. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Pretty much, the record was conceived because, obviously, as you know, this is our 25th anniversary, and we knew we knew we needed to come up with some kind of product to commemorate. So basically, we sent out an email to the entire company asking people to come up with different ideas about some kind of special product, something that's never been done before. You know, the one spark in all that was the idea to get a bunch of Roadrunner musicians together to record a single. We came up with the idea to expand on that idea and turn it into an entire record. So we decided that we'd pick four Roadrunner musicians to be what we're calling the team captains. So I picked guys that I knew were prolific songwriters, guys that were the main songwriters in their bands, and guys that I knew that could just like peel off songs. I've got guys on this record from the very beginning, right up until guys that were just signed six months ago, that just put out their records. So it really covers the whole history of the label from like, you know, the old guys to the new guys. 56 musicians spread out from 45 different Roadrunner bands. There have been tribute records before, there have been compilation records before, but there has never been a record, anything like this, in the history of the music business. So it's been a lot of work, but I'll tell you, it's like a, I've been having the time of my life. This is like the funnest, coolest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I'm loving it. Now if only like I had more time. I think it sounded really good. You want me to go again? There's a couple of things I did on there. You want, you want me to do another one? Yeah. Ready? Monty had been communicating with me about it, I think, prior before. He was just kind of like tossing the idea around. I was kind of like the guinea pig of the whole project, you know. Um, I was the first one to kind of get everybody together and get it get it going. So after me and Roy wrote the songs, we booked some studio time. Right right when he set up, he was like, bam! And I was like, I just I just plugged in and we went, wow, we just it, just, it was there. We had it, you know what I mean? It was a lot of fun and get to go crazy and play a lot of double bass and thrash out with Dino, it was awesome. I kind of wanted to get everybody in the jam room together. I wanted to get Andreas in the room together with me and Roy, and I wanted to get Paul from Slipknot in there, and I wanted to get you know um, everybody in there just to get like a band feel, a band vibe. I thought that was a really cool idea. You know, I was like, wow, how come nobody's ever thought of that before? Uh, I'm kind of glad that uh, Roadrunner came up with an idea to do something like this. I got involved because actually Dino called me and asked me to play bass on one of the songs. I was actually really surprised that he called me and at the same time really excited to do it. And then I listened to the song and I happened to like it on top of it, so it's even better. <laughs> I ended up uh, in this Roadrunner project because here at Undercity Recording, Roy brought the project here for Dino's four songs for the Roadrunner All-Stars. Andreas was flying in from Brazil, which was killer, you know. Him flying all the way to Brazil to come jam with me. I've known Andreas for many years. 
uh, since like 88, 89, around that time, when I first met uh, Andreas, and we were talking about guitar tunings and blah, blah, blah. And I remember the story. I always tell Andreas the story. Every time I see him, I tell him the story. I go, remember the one time when you told me, Andreas, you don't have to tune low to be heavy. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you don't have to tune low to be heavy. So, like, years later, he started tuning lower and stuff. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> We got him here in the studio and he, he put his magic onto the music and it just, you know, he did like killer solos and his killer wall wall effects that he likes to do. sound that signature Andreas sound on there sounded awesome Paul just has his Dino basically just walked in there and just, you know, just laid down a basic foundation and they just came over and went... It was awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. So when we were here in the studio putting it all together, uh, I decided, why don't we get all these other people in it? You know, I just, so I started calling Mikey from Spineshank, guitar player. He came down. I fucking love music. I love the bands that I did when I was a kid. And Fear Factory was definitely one of those bands. So to be in a studio with those dudes was like, oh, fuck. Like, it took me back to, you know, 10 years ago being a kid when D Manufacture came out. And, you know, I was like, holy shit, this is like the most awesome thing ever. It's a big honor to be asked to be a part of this just because I grew up listening to Roadrunner bands and I've been influenced by so many Roadrunner bands. Well, it's cool because a lot of the old school guys are teaming up with the newer school guys, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, we teamed up with Matt Heafy for the track and, you know, he's from Trivium. They're basically, you know, he's a kid, you know, compared to us. And he did, he did an amazing job, you know what I mean? He did a great job. He sang on one of the probably the most melodic songs that we have so far. I got to do a bunch of other things besides just play drums. I got to do the three things that I love to do. I like to engineer, I love to write, I love to play drums. So it was amazing. So it was really more like hanging out with friends. So that was a good thing. It wasn't this weird uptight situation where I didn't know anyone and you know what people are thinking and stuff. So. <laughs> we should uh, do it more often. You know, I, I was thinking, Roy was thinking too, like uh, just make records like this all the time. We have the means, you know. You know, when we were all here jamming together, we were, when we were all here working the parts out and you know recording everything, everybody was like, "Wow, man, why don't we just make this a band? This is it right here. All of us, all of us gelled really well together. You know what I mean?" Maybe, maybe someday in the future, you know, maybe we all get together and do a whole album. Well, I got a call from Monty Connor, kind of telling me that this is a plan that they had. I said, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> then about four months had passed at this point. He called me up again. He was just like, dude, I need you to be a captain, you know, to, to you know, do this as a favor for me. And I was like, 
<sighs> Montel. O'Connor. You know, I mean, I always thought it was a great idea. I just didn't think that I would have the time to do it, so I agreed. Oh, fucker. No cords. That day was like, dude, you should get Andals, who used to be in Chimera. And I was just like, oh, it's a killer idea, because he's, you know, sick. Sick drummer. All right. Little dream theater action kind of stuff going on there. You know? What's that? Little dream theater, like, you know, where's the beat? Yeah. I kind of think. <laughs> I was, I was able to catch on. Yeah, totally. I got lost in there, but I was able to get back on. Yeah, yeah. Everything was just different, you know, like not playing to a click, you know, different sized drums, working with a different person, you know, so everything was just like, it's like a totally new situation, but it feels good to do this again, you know, like it feels good to play again, like, because I've been away from this, you know, for a year and a few months, so it's not like I've faded into oblivion yet. I didn't realize. A, like how long the label had been around, and B, that um, you know that it was just like wow, like all these different artists like coming together and writing like new material. It's not gonna just be like let's celebrate by putting up B sides and demos and like one of those lame things. You know, it was like a really cool idea. Second chorus where we do the roll. Yeah. I'm kind of wanting it to come. I gotta hear it back. Like I'm not really sure, but I want. I'm kind of wanting it to come like at an unexpected time. Yeah. And maybe be like an unexpected length. Okay. And I don't know if that's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> like it seems like it's. It's it could be forward. Like how it's going into it right now. It's like we do like seven measures of the beat. Like. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four. So the beginning of the eighth line is when I hit it. Okay. That makes sense. Well, let's start it from <laughs> five, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> Everyone has a different way of explaining, trying to get the part across. Like they hear something in their head, and you know, where I'm the kind of person like I'll write it out and be like, well, it's eighth note or sixteenth note, and it's in this time. You know, most people, I guess, like in a metal genre, don't like really read music or you know have taken like music theory classes like I have, like a dork. So like they have to be like, we'll go, da 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 da, you know, or da 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 da, and then it's up to me to like. I see it in my head, like I'll, I'll see like manuscript paper and I'll see the notes and like, ah, you know. I was kind of like at a loss as to who was going to play bass, you know, who's going to be able to play this, like, super fast picking, you know, like, crazy mayhem. And, uh, and Monty actually suggested Christian. And, uh, you know, because he, and when he was the bass player in Fear Factory, he's the guitar player now, but when he was the bass player in Fear Factory, you know, he was locked in with all that stuff Dino was doing, and I was like, oh, there you go. Called Rob and Rob was like, "Hey, I want you to play bass on this project I'm doing for Roadrunner." Uh, even though I was I was right in the middle of doing a Fear Factory record, or, uh, you know, a new record, and I was like, "All right, let's uh, see if I can uh, somehow swing like a day, a day and a half to come down here and bang some shit out." Hey, you know, it's it's kind of tough because I don't really know the songs that well, and it's kind of like you know, on the spot, learn the riff. Rob was sitting there showing me the riff, and like ten seconds later, I'm trying to record it. But it's cool. It's, the songs sound really good. It's gonna be, I can tell. It's gonna. Be, it definitely has this uh, little machine head, more like a early machine hardcore vibe to it. It's gonna sound really good. I had to be right there when he goes out, but it was... 
I'll get it perfect. I'll get that one perfect. That's not good. Go to her, yeah. Oh, you don't want to double. No, that's long enough. Either. That's okay, long enough right there, yeah. <laughs> That was rocking. I missed a few notes, but it sounded okay. Check it out. I want to go on record and say, he's Rob's a great guy, but the sessions really take a lot out of you. <laughs> it was fun. Actually, it's good for me because I've been used to doing a lot of recording where I was producing and engineering as well and stuff like that. So it's kind of neat for me to come in and have somebody else's music and somebody else tell me what they like, what they don't like. It's not something I'm used to, so it's it's. You know, it's fun actually. See, the reason I'm just not that good of a guitar player is because like my uh, my brain actually goes like hazy. Yeah, that. that's <laughs> probably because you think about it. You have, you, if I think about this stuff, I can't play it. Yeah, There's just no way. It's gotta be the pit. Fucking sick. It's the pit. I'm telling like, you. Like all day, like this is like, hey, you do a pick slide. <laughs> it's like fuck. Our a &R guy at Roadrunner gave me a call and uh, explained to me how Rob heard the CD and uh, liked the guitar work and needed someone else for the record. He had like killer guitar tone and seemed like he had definitely some good chops. So, you know, it's definitely more like melodic metal and I thought it would be, you know, appropriate. Today I went from being the fanboy to being like a part of everything. Just I'm so excited and ecstatic, ecstatic to be here, you know, it's like. It's the, it's the classic fairy tale story, man. It's a dream come true. Ooh. It is, though, man. You could say it's been interesting, yeah. You know, it's kind of weird because it's like, you know, we're not really a band. You know what I mean? It's just like, I'm, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not used to dealing with just, you know, someone coming in for a day and, you know, for the most part, having to teach them the song in a day, and then, you know, get it down, and then, all right, you're done, light, I gotta go, my flight's uh, leaving in you know, an hour. <laughs> what I tell you, look at that, like clockwork, and a great place so that I don't have to pick it up. You know, you're sitting there, like, learning how to play guitar as a kid, you know, and you're, like, playing your first shows as a kid, and you're seeing all these bands that you, like, looked up to and idolized, you know, I loved, I loved, loved Sepultura, like, as a kid, just, you know, I worshiped them. Saw Sepultura like a million times, and you know, now I get to like have Max sing on one of my songs, you know. So we have things about us that are unexplainable, you know, they just happen. So once you get the right kind of music, the right vibes, uh, I just do what I think it's it's really clicking with with what they wrote because I wasn't there when they made the, the instrumental, you know. You know, so for like the Mac song, I got like really just fucking straight up super hardcore, just like, you know, mayhem. And I knew that, you know, just like in my head, I, you know, I probably won't accomplish it, but I wanted it to be like the best song Sepultura never wrote. You know, like I was just like, that's what I want him to like sing over. In the end, it comes about chemistry before when you're like, when you're making the song and um, certain vibes that are going on in, in the song when it gets to me and I connect those vibes then I put my vibe on top of it then become awesome red eye so Robert Flynn doing okay you're in there ready to rock horde always Really looking forward to hearing it when it's done. You know, I love so and so from that band, so and so from that band. Well, they wrote, they got together, and you know, as a fan, to me, that's badass. You know.
people are putting so much hard work into it, like writing all these songs and all these musicians come together. And it's definitely, that's what's really cool about it. You know, get collaborate with all these different people. I mean, these are collaborations that nobody would ever think of ever seeing, you know. something that fans and people in general are just really going to get into because they're getting to hear like sounds of all their you know favorite bands being thrown together into one CD. It's just about kind of trying to get the best out of everybody that's coming in. I mean, these are quality players, you know. These guys are, some of them are legends. I'm just glad to be here. It's a, basically, it's an honor to be able to be on the, the CD with some of these guys, and especially playing with Rob. I just can't wait to hear it. All right. How about the cheat sheet, man? <laughs> What's that? How about the cheat sheet? Yeah? Well, fuck, you write some badass cheat sheets. <laughs> It was like being with, like, hanging out with Rob Flynn. It's like dating a supermodel. It's like, what the hell do I do? What the hell do I say? I'll just try and be myself and hope he likes me. <laughs> Fuck that shit, man. God, you fucking drummers. <laughs> it's a lot of work, I gotta say. It's yeah. definitely more work than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> His, his music is fantastic, so for me to come in here and do that was a bit of an honor, I'll tell you that. As far as like the emotional place, it's like I, they're just more songs from the warped mind of Rob Flynn, <laughs> so. I'm like, I'm stunned. Yeah. Knock it out, man. That's killer. Hold yeah, fucking yeah. You guys rock. The only thing left is the burrito. Word. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, what's up, guys? It's Matt from Trivium here. Doing the Roadrunner shit, Roadrunner CD, uh, working with Johnny Kelly today. We're doing a southern rock, you know, stoner metal feeling song. It's the first day of the whole project, so it's going pretty damn good. That was a pretty disappointing piss. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you know when you wake up and you fucking pee a lot? Yeah. Well, that wasn't what just happened. Well,
just we had just finished touring together. I was playing for Danzig, and uh, Trivium was opening up, so we you know we became friends that way. And they said, you know, you're gonna come to come down to Florida and record here with with these nuts. I'm trying to do something at the end, and I'm not nailing it. It's like frustrating me. I'm not nailing you, and that's frustrating me. Well, the night's still young. We got plenty of time for that. First work, then pleasure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they basically sent me a, an MP3 Monday night, and then Tuesday I spent the whole day traveling here. Yeah. So I really didn't get to listen to it. I got to listen to it like two or three times yesterday morning. All right. Matt was feeling it too, more importantly, because my opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> well, at least we know where you stand. Oh! oh. <laughs> 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 Get it where you stand? <laughs> Cool, you know, I always found it exciting, like, you know, to play with some different people, like, you know, from time to time. But it's been a good ride, man. It's been fun. Awesome. Best job in the world. One of the first bands, Typo, was one of the first bands to break. You know, we were the first ones to uh, get a gold record for, uh, for Roadrunner. We were part of the struggle. <laughs> Definitely part of the struggle. You know, it's just all about keeping busy, man. You know, yeah. you know, if, if I'm gonna hit, any, if I'm gonna like, you know, swing something, I'd rather it be a drumstick than a hammer. Dude, do you know what? You know what this fucking track needs? Hmm. Some macaroni. Well, today we're doing a King Diamond attempt. We got Dave Shivari from El Nino and myself from uh, Trivium. What's up? Yeah, so we're doing this shit. Um, you know, King Diamond. We're, we're gonna fuck up this King Diamond track. Yeah. We're gonna make King Diamond proud. <laughs> He's a good creator of music, you know. And the kid's 19 years old. Me and Matt have a, I guess, certain liking for a lot of the same stuff, you know. He wanted the King Diamond song to sound like King Diamond, and he wanted it to sound like, you know, like Trivium and like Il Nino, like the guys from different bands actually played in that song. It was very cool, man. I, I, I really love that song, you know. Uh, we have a certain style that we like to put in there, and, and uh, you know, how we write riffs and how we arrange the whole the sequence of a song, you know, and uh, the, the main part is King Diamond, I think, you know, but there's certainly also some old style Merciful Fate uh, stuff in there, and then uh, the verse riff, you know, it reminds me a lot of old Merciful Fate, actually. I mean, ripping guitar, uh, love it, man. I mean, it's, that long solo in the middle is just killer. I'm extremely proud to be able to play that song for any of my, my closest friends. Do you want to go Merciful Fate or King Diamond on that? Let's go King Merciful Diamond on that. Cause, cause, King, okay, because uh, like you, you can go. I like the first one. Was the first one King or was the first one Mercy? The first, the first one was was more merciful fate. Yeah, let's do that one. I like the one with the guitar. Right. If you tr uh, like tom fills and shit, like on instrumental parts, I can write a guitar solo that does the exact same rhythmic things that you do. Cool. Like if, you're, if you're doing like that exact rhythm, I'll do that like a guitar part. Cool. I'm really happy with that. So far, that. Yeah, yeah, that part's awesome. Those are oh, great. I feel like a big fan of King Diamond, a big fan of Merciful Fate for many, many years, you know? And uh, it was cool to kind of bring that back to life on some of the stuff that I've heard for many years. It was fun. To me, it's, it's about attitude, you know? It's about becoming part of that team at the time, you know, because if you're playing for a completely different project, it's not, which is not my band, you know, it's, uh, you have to become part of the project. You have to become part of the team. Loosen up your hi-hat a little bit. It is loose. Just like your mama. Stop talking and start working. I'm not sure exactly how happy you are with people that can't walk. <laughs> But I'm never walking again because of you. I'm gonna show you why I can't walk. It's the bottom of. The 
let's go. Import my fucking balls into your lips. <laughs> come to play I come man I come to fuck it up you know I don't I don't come to lay back I come to just basically you know come in and, and just tear it up it's stuff that he just taught me that I would not ever thought of because I learned a lot of shit stuff to make the live performance better and uh, I mean we're, we're a live oriented band and we've always really been all about making the live show as good as we can it's some cool shit Popped up out of nowhere and I jumped to the chance to be playing with King Diamond. Yeah. Really stoked on that. I wouldn't have anybody else but Corey on there because Corey's a huge King fan. I mean, he knows everything about metal, he knows everything about music. He's really, really educated in music. I don't know why he knows some of the shit he does, but he knows just every artist who's been on every CD for every kind of music for some stupid reason. Um, he's an incredible guitar player, a great person to work with, and he fucking shreds, and he writes great, and he plays great, he's got a great attitude, can circle headbang better than any death metal guy ever will be able to, and he's good. I found out I was doing guitar stuff yeah. today. That's, that's the way I like to do it too, man. I was like sleeping, and they, Matt called me up, left me a message like, yeah, you're doing guitar today, I'm like, fuck! Yeah. Today we're doing the black metal song, which is what I've been really looking forward to because I'm a black metal fan, even though I'm not Norwegian. Got Mike Smith from Suffocation. Man can blast faster and louder than most people I've ever heard, and it's gonna rock. Let's talk about Mike Smith for a second. That man is a fucking innovator of all that is blasting. I've always found that it was light, and what you wind up hearing in, in mixes is more bass drum and hi-hat, and all of a sudden the snare has disappeared because I can't keep that intensity a pound. It's Winds up being a little light slap. You heard the difference, right? Yeah. That's you know, you gotta give him credit, man. He created that shit. No one else is doing that. Fucking our system of a down is doing it. If he could have copyrighted the motherfucking blast beat, dude, suffocation would be like a. Well, they'd be the, probably the same place they are, yeah? What, what can you do when you're in a fucking death metal band?
Roadrunner was our original label that it wants to put us out in the scene and we thank them for that. And I thank them for thinking of Suffocation and myself to help out on the All Stars project because I think uh, we deserve to be here. The kids need to know where it all came from. They wanted to do a song where it inquired some of what I did when I was on Roadrunner, which was blasting and a little bit of grind. They asked if I would come in and uh, put my flavor to it, which I said, of course. That's like groove on that. Yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. No, 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 whatever you want to do. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, which, that's another type of groove, but it's on a different tempo. Yeah. yeah, really, like, I like untraditional on these things, too. Right. You know, everybody expects one thing, but if you do something exactly. different, like, exactly. they've added some, like, Latin feels in, exactly. in a King Diamond song. And that's that's pretty much how I come across when I'm when I do any drum and I try and do what just opposite of what people would expect. Yeah, to be honest. that'll be perfect. That'll be perfect. All right, cool. Music, <laughs> that's everything. It's the way I speak. You know, um, on an everyday basis, I'm the most laid back, the quietest person at in any crowd. You know, I, I speak more inside my head than I do actually. This, this talking on this camera right now yeah. is more than anyone will get from me for the whole month of talking. So that's my way of speaking. You know, I'm angry. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm sad. I do everything and, I, and I'm able to portray it and put it into my music. That's where it's most important to me. So it's my way of talking. It's my vocal box. <laughs> You know, Danny Filth is playing on it, and you know, Mike Smith from Suffocation is on it as well, and that's that's incredible. You know, those guys are two musicians that I've personally been inspired by. You know, when getting into metal, so like Suffocation and D Side and um, King Diamond and Merciful Fate were were among many of like the bands that really inspired me, and you know, just it's a, it's quite a privilege and an honor, you know. just threw the idea my way and he knows I'm into black metal so he's you know definitely into it you know black metal you either got it or you don't. You either can write black metal or you can't. I made sure that there's a, there was structure to it, like repeating parts, because I, I like, like coming back to certain parts musically, and it worked out really well. This shit did not come easily. I've been working my ass out since I was 12 years old. I locked myself up in my room seven hours a day playing guitar. It's not luck, I mean, it's hard work. I wanna be doing this when I'm, you know, 50, 60, whatever, still doing heavy ass metal. day of my session that I'm doing for the Road Runner All-Stars 25th anniversary and right now I'm taking you guys to the studio that I'm working out of. It looks like it's gonna storm like a motherfucker. Welcome to <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Handicap spot. <laughs> Can you 
crew and all. What's up, man? Yeah. This is uh, our engineer, Matt Sapanic. He helps me with a lot of stuff here. Um, I started on guitar first, you know, when I was younger. That was my first instrument. And, um, you know, I've been playing all my life along with drums. Um, you know, they're, they're both two different loves that I have, you know. And this project, you know, in particular, it's known that I'm producing the songs. I got the team together of who played on what, and I wrote the songs myself. I think that maybe people get a little bit better of an idea of me as a songwriter as well as my personality. Not, definitely not what anybody expects him to write. In VOD, I was actually playing some metal stuff, but this is, you know, kind of new, new ground, uh, I think, for both of us. It's definitely a different type of, you know, song that we're playing on, so I think everyone's going to be pleasantly surprised. Play on it. You know, just do your own thing, and next thing you know, you're listening to it at three o'clock in the morning at the end of the session, and you're all you know stoked about it. All right, so we got Steve Giorgio and Matt DeVries passed out because they went out when I was doing uh, work tonight with a uh, Rob Barrett. So I got a couple shots in me, but these guys are passed out in the game room. So I'm gonna fuck them up right now. And I did my special box. Joey said, uh, well, um, uh, hey, I'm uh, putting together this thing with the stuff, and, uh, and uh, can you be on a plane tomorrow? It doesn't matter. Joey called me up and asked me to play guitar on something. I feel like there's very few true musical talents in hard rock. Uh, you know, myself included, I don't consider myself a talented musician. We're entertainers. Uh, fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> to me, Joey is one of the few actually legitimately talented people out there. And so to be in the studio with him and uh, 
you know, know what a talented guy he was is a bit intimidating. But at the same time, we have such a great chemistry that it was a lot of fun too. It's crazy motherfuckers from Iowa, of all fucking places, just throwing it down. It's an honor to meet to meet these guys and, and to be a part of a project, musical project with them uh, has been a blast. It's been really cool. Get in here, you fucking whore! What was this? What is this? <laughs> Bu busting in on your your interview, fucking looking for this pick. I've been looking for a pick for like this pick certain pick here. for like a half this hour. One? That's the one, motherfucker! <laughs> been looking for it for a half hour. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Matt DeVries, I'm about 5'10", Aquarius. Uh, <laughs> it's just awesome, you know, I've looked up to Joey as a drummer and, and he's a real good friend and you know, I just think the whole experience is great. Just even jamming with them, you know, makes me makes me happy because I'm just stoked. You know, it's like an honor to be asked to be a part of this. So. <laughs> Joey has all the old school metal, like, you know, people that I grew up on, like worshiping. Yeah. No, because you know the first one goes. That's do you like pickles? Yes, I like pickles. I'm buying the house. <laughs> Lazy on that fretboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're, you're really fucking pretty lazy on that fretboard. Can you speed it up and do some technical shit? <laughs> Dude, I'm six foot four, man. I'm fucking lazy with everything. <laughs> I don't consider myself like a really killer guitar player or even a killer drummer. I really, my, my passion about music is just being able to create a song that sticks in people's memories and try and, you know, make people feel an emotion. That's my biggest, uh, you know, goal when creating a song. That's something I've always been involved in is the overall picture of how a song comes together and how it's put down on tape and the end result instead of just, you know, I mean, I want to know everything about it. Like in the studio, I'm always like the first one there and the last one to leave there every day.
me, yeah. <laughs> the end was maniacal. I, 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 I haven't yelled at the old lady yet today, so I haven't <laughs> stretched it all out yet. Okay, so... I only uh, yelled at a couple old ladies on the drive over here, but I got the PA the and the Jeep. Thing. It's just like... <laughs> Get your elderly self out of the way, please. I'm in a hurry. Jim is waiting on me. Joey asked me uh, to do it. They, Monty and everybody at Roadrunner has been up my, my ass about it. And um, yeah, so I finally got in here and did it. <laughs> I, I was up for the challenge, and I mean, I, I got the tune. I was like, oh, well, it's a little different than what I'm used to doing that. But I, I like the grooving parts and everything for it, man. So, and I heard the uh, when the, the one part in there kicked in, I was like, hey, I'll tear that cross by their hands and their feet. You know, it just come right out of me. So, it was good. Hard times bring good songs. I, I find my temper and my anger inside to be my best tool. Wow, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it though. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna hear it back? James Murphy, everyone! I had never heard the songs before, before stepping into the studio today, and uh, literally started recording uh, probably 20 minutes after first hearing the song. And that's tip, kind of typical of the way I work on a solo, on my stuff, on anything that I do a guest appearance on. I just compose it on the spot. Yes, uh, working on these songs with uh, Rob Barrett and uh, Steve DiGiorgio in particular, these are guys that I have like long history with, friends going way back many, many years. Hey, we did this together, you know. It's something that we'll have for the rest of our lives, and it becomes part of the, the Roadrunner legacy ongoing. That should be good. It was hard to narrow it down because originally it was like three songs that I had, and then it turned into four, and it turned into five. You know, I wanted to do six, actually. I had a six song I wanted to do, but we ran out of time. It's been one of the most fulfilling projects I've ever done in the studio because I've got to learn from a lot of different people and the music has come out way beyond my expectations. I couldn't be happier with the, with the end result. That was rocking! Yeah, it sounds like you gave yourself more room than that in your scratch. You need some more espresso shots like me. I'm fucking tweaking, dude. I got like eight in me. Foot. She got me, man. Look at the two bites. <laughs> Damn, man. What's your problem? <laughs> Hello! Holy <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> so fast! Dude, she's fucking like a... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking A, man. She got me, man. Here's the interview. Interview over. Basically, Roadrunner is just a logo that you could see and know that generally you're going to get what you want. And everyone there um, has just been nothing but supportive of my ideas and my creativity. It's a long history, man. It's like some of my favorite records of all time that will always be my favorite records are from Roadrunner. It's 
sometimes very difficult to explain to a label where you really want to go. I mean, they just want to market the thing and that's it, you know, but I think the people at Roadrunner wanted to sort of see this a bit further. I love Roadrunner, man. Uh, just look at their back catalog, X Order, all those great bands, you know, from the day, and it's it's killer. And yeah, and the bands now are awesome, you know. So we've always been just stoked to be a part of that. We just feel lucky every day, you know. Roadrunner kind of opened, you know, eyes and ears to, you know, a lot of people that didn't know anything about heavy music. But when I was a kid, especially, that was the label I always wanted to be on. To me, Roadrunner represented like the best of, of the best. I mean, I was, I was influenced by loads of records on Roadrunner as a kid. They took chances on bands that were absolutely not the types of bands who would normally sell very well. There's kids out there who just buy Roadrunner record stuff. Like you can go to a record store, never heard of the band, but you see the cover and you see the label, it says Roadrunner on it, Okay, it's gonna be good, you know what I mean? And you buy it. I would buy a record if it just the cover looked cool, and if it was on Roadrunner, I, I would check it out. That was reassurance enough for us that that's a good band. Some people think we follow trends. You know, we're not following the trends, we're setting the fucking trends. That's what kids don't realize. You know, over the years, any type of music we're doing, we are the first ones there, we're not following it. Roadrunner's always been about pushing the walls out, not building them up. They've got their ears to the underground, which is really cool, and they've never lost touch with that. You know, there's obviously some genuine metalheads there. It's just been a great bonding experience between me and all these musicians. I mean, I have only good to say about the, the relationship that I've ever had with Rogue on it. They, they're very mellow and down earth, and that's what I like about them. You know, it's a cool relationship. We had fights and stuff, but that's normal, because it's like family. But if I were to go out and get hit by a bus tomorrow, like I've left my mark on this planet, I've worked with some great bands, um, and to that I'm really, you know, for that fact I'm really, really thankful. Like I'm looking for the next thing now, I'm trying to figure out what is going to be the next movement in metal and to be the first one there to sign it. So that's pretty much been our philosophy, is to always stay on whatever's cutting edge in metal. You know, whatever the next sound in metal is going to be, we're going to be there first.